Welcome to watch the Hoi Miles Combiner Box HMSC installation video. This video contains five chapters, preparation, product overview, box installation, electrical connection, and S Miles platform operation. If you have other needs, please refer to the user manual. And all installations must be performed in accordance with local electrical standards and the National Electrical Code. Now, let's take a look at what you need to prepare before installation. The following tools and materials are recommended in the installation process. Personal protective equipment should be worn when operating the equipment. Then please check whether the combiner box accessories are complete. The combiner box contains DTU+, power supply, and smart meter, can communicate with the S-Miles cloud platform via 4G and Ethernet. In addition, it integrates the Eaton Beer style load center, a pre-installed communication module, breaker, and main lug, can handle up to 5 microinverter AC branch inputs to manage more loads and higher input currents. The lower left corner of the box contains pre-installed PVC-T1 and PVC-T2. In the lower right corner is neutral bar and ground bar for cable wiring. For better understanding installation, we'd like to have a look on the combiner box system diagram, including microinverter input, combiner box, AC output to main load center and grid CT connection. Now, we can start the installation. In this step, we need to install the combiner box and all the wiring tubes. First, install the mounting brackets into the combiner box and secure them using the provided screws. Please select the appropriate installation location according to local regulations and actual usage scenarios. Then vertically mount the combiner box onto the installation surface, securing it with M8 screws as illustrated below. Now, we can start the electrical connections. Section 1. Installing DG Breakers First, open the combiner box with the enclosure key and use an electric screwdriver to loosen the four screws supporting the dead front. Pull the dead front away from the combiner box. Then, remove the filter plate on the dead front for each DG breaker position to be used. In the position where you remove the filter plate, snap the DG breaker onto the PV load center. Please ensure that all circuit breakers are in the off state. Section 2. Connecting the microinverter AC branch input. Use a marker to mark the location of the holes. Start by drilling shallow pilot holes at the marks using a small drill bit. Then use a step drill bit to drill holes for the conduit connectors. Insert conduit hub fittings into each corresponding hole and fully tighten the fittings. Slide the conduits into the fittings as required by local regulations. Next, we wire the microinverter AC in cables into combiner box. After inserting the microinverter AC in cable into the conduit, connect it to the combiner box. Pass the L1 conductors from each PV branch circuit through the PVCT1 in the same direction as the arrow printed on the side of the CT. Pass the L2 conductors from each PV branch circuit through the PVCT2 in the same direction as the arrow printed on the side of the CT. Plug the L1 and L2 conductors into each DG breaker's terminal slots. Please note that cables are allowed to pass under the load center. Observe the L1 and L2 polarity marking at each breaker position. Each DG breaker can only be connected to one microinverter AC branch. Connect ground wire to the ground bar. Complete the second microinverter AC branch connection in the same way. Section 3. Wiring the Output Connections Select the appropriate AC output cable according to local electrical regulations, including L1-L2-NG cables. First, 
Complete the combiner box side wiring. Connect the L1 and L2 cables to the main lug of the combiner box. Connect the ground wire to the ground bar and connect the neutral wire to the neutral bar. Then connect the other end of the AC output cables into the main load center. Please select the appropriate PV breaker according to local regulations and install it in the suitable position in the main load center. Connect the L1 and L2 output cables to the PV circuit breaker. and connect the neutral wire to the neutral bar and connect the grounding wire to the ground bar. Section 4 Installing the Grid CTs Place the two grid CTs in the main load center and pass the grid CT cables through the conduits and connect them to the combiner box. Firstly, Connect the wires of the grid CTs to the corresponding port on the smart meter. The white wire of grid CT2 corresponds to port 34 of the electric meter. The blue wire of grid CT2 corresponds to port 36 of the electric meter. The white wire of grid CT1 corresponds to port 31 of the electric meter. The blue wire of grid CT1 corresponds to port 33 of the electric meter. Then clamp the grid CTs on the grid cables of the main load center. CT1 corresponds to the L1 of the mains power, and CT2 corresponds to the L2 of the mains power. Section 5. Energizing the combiner box. First, check that all connections are correct and tight, and reinstall the dead front. Make sure all circuit breakers are in the off position. First turn on the main PV breaker. Open the communication module circuit breaker in the combiner box, and then open the DG breaker S. Wait briefly for the microinverter to start. After the microinverter start is completed, the meter will display the current and power. Next is the setup process for activating the monitoring platform. Peel off the removable SN label of the combiner box. Affix the label to the respective location on the installation map and ensure that you have updated your S-Miles installer app to the latest version. Type in the username and password. Click Login and you will be directed to the Plants page. Click the O and M icon at the bottom of the page and then click the Network Configuration. Then the app will alert you that Wi-Fi is not connected. Click Go to Z to redirect to the WLAN page. On the WLAN settings, select and connect to DTU hotspot. Return to the O&M screen and click Network Config icon. Click the network cable or 4 grams according to the actual connection mode, and then click the Send to DTU button. The network configuration takes about 1 minute to complete. Please wait patiently. Let's go back to the plants page. Click plus sign on the upper left and start building your plant. First, you need to fill in the name of your plant and other basic information. Please avoid duplicate plant names. Then select the plant type and enter the capacity of your system. Please note that the plant type cannot be changed once it is created. So please select one that suits your installation situation and the installed capacity. Next, select the area where your power plant is located. The map will automatically locate your current area. You can locate the area either by dragging and zooming the map with gestures, or by manually entering detailed address information. Then select your time zone. Please make sure you select the right time zone, because a wrong one will affect the display of your daily power generation. Then choose your region. You can upload a picture of your plant if you want to add the cover. Click Next. Go to the Owner Information page. Click the icon in the upper right corner to add an account. In this step, you need to set up a login account, password, username, and fill in email and phone information. Then click Save. And you can see the owner information you have added. Then click Next to add devices and set layouts. Click EDTU and add the DTU serial number. The serial number can be entered manually or added by scanning the barcode. 
After completing the serial number entry, click Add Micro and enter the microinverter serial number. Then click the Finish button below. Fill in all required information and then click Next to complete this step. Then we can move on to lay out your plant. You can change the array name, fill in the azimuth and inclination of your modules and then select the layout pattern. Click Save and enter the PV module layout interface. Adjust your modules according to the actual installation and click Next when the layout is complete. Upload the installation map of the power plant or you can also directly click Next to start more settings of the power station. Fill in the rest of information about the plant and then click Finish. Now, your power plant is turned on and starting.